Hey everyone, it's Amberly. Um, today I wanted to talk about some issues with snakes not eating. This can be any sort of form of anorexia, just inappetence in general. There are quite a few environmental factors that may cause your snake to stop eating. The temperature may be too warm or maybe too cold. The thermal gradient, as you know, um, there has to be a hot side and a cool side. As long as there is a substantial difference between the hot side and the cool side, which is what the snakes need to thermoregulate, they shouldn't have any issues. Another issue is humidity. If it's too humid or too dry, they may not eat. So a lot of it is just their environment, like what their tanks or tubs are like. Um, if you correct all the temperatures and all the humidity, chances are your snake will go back onto food, unless it's another problem, which leads me to the seasons. As everyone knows, the snakes like to start feeding in the spring, eat heavily in the summer, bulk up in the fall, and then kind of go off feed for breeding season, and they won't really pick back up again until um, after babies are hatched or uh, late spring. So that can be an issue. If they have too much artificial light, it could prevent them from eating, as well as too little artificial light. You do want to keep it from the 12 hours of light, 12 hours of night during the summer, and then gradually cut back the artificial lighting in the fall and winter. If you don't have artificial lighting, maybe your tank or your tub is next to a window. This can skew their perceptions of days and seasons and times as well. Another reason is some snakes obviously like to burrow, some like to climb, like green tree pythons, some have to have a hide. If they're, if they don't have access to these things, they may become stressed out, which may put them off of food as well. So do some research on your snake if it needs, you know, lots of aspen or a hide or a tree. Just make sure those things are available and your snake will probably go back on to feed. What kind of food you're offering also makes a difference. You want to make sure you're feeding them the right foods and the right size of foods. Tree pythons tend to eat chicks and not mice, which is why um, local pet shops who don't have chicks available may have trouble getting them to eat. A couple of snakes eat bugs. You may need to pick up crickets or other things like that. The majority of snakes do eat mice, but you want to make sure it's the right size for them. Uh, one way to do it is if your snake isn't eating, bump the mouse down a size or bump the rat up a size and see if they take it that way. You can also try putting the mouse or rat in like used mouse bedding or used gerbil bedding. This will usually get them to try to go back onto food. If you're having a lot of trouble getting your snake to eat, you could try an African soft fur. They seem to really enjoy these. You could also try going from live to frozen thawed or frozen thawed to live, although we all know the risks of feeding live, and I wouldn't recommend live, but if that's what um, you guys do, then you know maybe the switch will help them out. Also, this may seem kind of strange, but some snakes don't like mice or rats. Our two snakes, Emma and Philomena, will have absolutely nothing to do with rats, and so we have to feed them only mice, even though Emma could probably easily tank a small or medium-sized rat, we have to feed her like two or three extra-large adult mice instead. You also want to make sure that the temperatures are right. If you try to uh, thaw them too fast, the bellies may still be cold, or if your water is too hot, you may have accidentally cooked them a bit. If you end up cooking them, you, you'll probably be able to tell they smell really bad. If you are feeding them something that's cooked, it can make them sick. It's probably going to lead to regurge. As gross as, as it is, just, you know, it's easier to sniff it than to clean up regurge and possibly stress your snake out, which is going to make it even harder for them to want to go back onto food. Believe it or not, snakes do have, like, psychological factors. They can become depressed and stressed out. They can become afraid, as 
we've all kind of seen those things. But depending on where their tubs or tanks are can affect how they're eating. If their tub or if their tank is on something wobbly and it's unsteady, if they're located in a high traffic foot area where the vibrations are always kind of going off, also, if their tanks or tubs are like surrounded by light, there's no at least one wall where there's like the, the wallpaper or if it's against the wall. They need to have some sort of backing, preferably on like the back and the sides to make them feel like they can't be accessed by predators through those means. Snakes can also become mouse shy. They may have had an incident with a live mouse where it may have bit them or scratched them, they're a little leery going after a live mouse again, or if you feed frozen thawed, they may have um, struck and missed, they may have hit their noses on like their feeding tubs or whatever, but it, it's gonna make them not want to strike as readily. Just try to offer the food more gently. If it's frozen thawed, maybe let it sit in their tub with them. Sometimes we actually put the mouse like kind of like on the end of their backs and eventually they'll kind of sniff it out and say, okay, this is safe. For live mice, I'm, I'm not really sure. Maybe you'd want to try to like get a smaller size. We don't do live, so however you want to handle that, there might be other information on the internet about how to get a snake that's feeding on live un -mouse shy. Always house your snake singly because this is a huge stress factor for them and we all know stress makes snakes not want to eat. When snakes are housed together, they're constantly kind of fighting for, you know, the best warm spot, the, the water availability, or the, the best hide or the highest tree branch or what have you. And whoever doesn't win gets kind of pushed off to the side and then they're you know, they're stressed out, they're paranoid. Also dealing with stress, again, don't handle your snakes before you feed them. Uh, try to give them at least, you know, 12 to 24 hours. Just let them chill. You also don't want to handle them too much after they eat because that can stress them out and then they could throw up. Another reason snakes may not want to eat is that they're getting ready for something else. They may be going into shed or they may be going into breeding season. Many people out there sort of feed their snakes a very large meal, maybe once a month or so. Overfeeding can induce fasting, so while maybe you only have to feed them once a month, but maybe next month they're still not going to want to eat. Maybe they're still full. I'm not sure about that because we feed our snakes smaller meals once to twice a week. I would also recommend that you don't power feed. It does shorten their lifespans and it can give them problems when they're trying to breed. And it can actually also lead to obesity. Snakes can get fat and this causes the same sort of issues as it does with humans who are obese. Restricted blood flow, heart issues, breathing issues, and all the like. And there are other medical factors that could cause a snake not to eat. We could be looking at parasites. Uh, some of these can be seen macroscopically in their waste. A lot of them probably are microscopic or they're still hanging out inside of the intestines. This is one of those times where you want to go and get a fecal smear from your vet. Maybe she'll do a trachea wash and just to figure out what exactly is might be going on inside your snake if all of the factors I've mentioned before this are just not what's going on with your snake. Your snakes could be impacted or constipated. I know a couple of ours have been constipated and just stopped eating for, you know, two or three weeks. I do have a video on constipation and how to help your snake get unconstipated. I will put the link in the description below. I do talk about rat lax in that video, but I didn't get to show it. It's basically when you use, you know, some sort of oil, vegetable oil or um, olive oil, and you kind of squirt it down inside the, the rat or the mouse with a syringe or 
what have you. And then you offer this to the snake. So when the rat digests, it releases that oil and that will help lubricate their bowels. You do not want to try to put oil directly down your snake's mouth. Please do not do that. They may have respiratory problems. They can also have integumentary issues, which means of the skin. So they could be dealing with scale rot or mouth rot. Um, they could have intestinal issues or pneumonia, things going on on the inside that you can't really see. Again, any sort of scale rot or mouth rot or any intestinal um, things like that, pneumonia, parasites, please take your snake to your vet. They will work out something with you. I know our vet only charges $38 a visit for any animal. Hopefully you can find a vet in your area that will be affordable and really good. And, I mean, our vet has ball pythons, so she's like such a keeper. And I really hope you guys can find a vet that's like that because it's worth the money. I mean, your snakes aren't just investments. They aren't just part of your business. They're your pets. They're your family. And, I mean... I would definitely, I'd rather spend my last dollar on one of my snakes than to let anything bad happen to them. Another thing that might cause a trip to the vet would be metabolic issues. This would probably require a blood test, but they could be deficient in some sort of mineral or vitamin, or they may have hormonal issues. Another physical factor that could cause them to stop eating is they've lost their sense of sight or their sense of smell. It's been hindered. Older snakes can uh, deal with this. Snakes can get cataracts and things like that. So you'd want to take your snake to the vet to get validation to see what exactly you could do to help get your snake back on food. A very, very common reason that female snakes go off food is that they're gravid or pregnant. They're ovulating, they're getting ready to breed. A lot of the females will chow down and bulk up before and then just not eat during. If you've had a snake that was severely malnourished, as we did with Beatrice, this can cause a lot of difficulty feeding. You'll probably have to assist feed or force feed, which is not fun. It can also cause uterine problems, such as uterus infection or uterine rupture. Malnourished snakes who are breeding can develop egg binding. They could have yolk embolism, which is when it a, an egg breaks inside the uterine tract and then the yolk gets into the bloodstream. This can block arteries, it can cause stroke and even death. And then there's also yolk peritonitis. And this is again when the yolk breaks in the oviduct and it runs back into the body. There are cavities in the body um, where the organs sit and it can get in there, it can cause infection, um, it can even lead to infertility. So those things are very severe. If your snake is not up to weight or it seems really skinny, please do not breed it because it could end up with, you know, these um, egg issues, egg binding, it can lead to infertility, and that's certainly not something we want to happen. I mean, it's, it's bad for business, if you're going to think about it just like that, but it's really bad for the snake. So I hope you guys learned uh, something about why snakes go off food or develop inappetence in general. Um, a lot of the problems can be fixed. You can fix their temps, you can offer them different food, you can change the location of their habitat, but some of these problems are obviously bigger. If you've done all of these things and your snake is still having trouble eating and it's not going into shed and it's not breeding season and you've done everything else, please take your snake to a vet. It could be something as small as a mineral deficiency, but then again it could be something very serious that could lead to death. So if you guys have any questions about how to um, fix any of these issues that I may not have covered in the video because I'm kind of like brain fried right now, leave comments down below and I will get back to you. You can also send us messages to our inbox. We get those. 
Any questions at all, feel free to ask. If you have anything that I've missed, feel free to leave it in the comments below so that somebody else can see what you have to say and maybe get a better idea. Alright, thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you next time. Hey guys, if you liked that video, check out some of our other videos on our channel. Also, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, share with a friend. We want to see the community grow as a whole. And as always, have a good one.